One week ago, child care centers in Massachusetts could begin applying to reopen as part of the governor's phase two plan. But those centers will have to meet the state's new safety requirements against COVID-19, including serving fewer kids at one time. At square one, that means there's room for about half of the 500 kids it typically serves. How will they navigate this and other changes? I spoke with Christine Allard, Square One's Vice President of Development and Communications, for details. How are the children going to react to wearing masks if their parents um, indicate that they'd like to have them have masks on? Um, how are they going to respond to their teachers being in masks and the, the different layouts of their classrooms and the way we've had to adapt our curriculum to um, meet the social distancing um, standards and things like that? So there is still a, a, a great unknown, but we're doing our best to prepare for every possible scenario. Can you give us an example of one of those things that you did reach out to the state and give some feedback, either asking for an adjustment or some more clarification or just a complete change uh, from what they had suggested in the guidelines? Sure. Well, one of the things was masks. And, and I think that's been a big question on the minds of a lot of people, adults and, and children. Um, you know, how will people react to that? And initially, the plans were that all of the children um, in our preschool programs would be required to wear a mask. And we're not really sure how that's going to work. Um, you know, children have that oral fixation. They, they bite, they chew. Um, we were afraid of that, that some children might, um, it, it could cause a choking hazard. Um, so these were all things that they listened to us and, and heard us on and now it's really up to the parents to decide if um, if they feel their child will benefit from wearing a mask then they will be um, they will have their mask on some of the other elements that were ticked through in the 30 page 32 page document that the state rolled out earlier this month uh, it indicated that group meaning children size number of children allowed in room and staff will be limited to 12 and also six feet distancing which we're all very familiar with now and about a minimum of 42 square feet per child. How do you even begin, especially if you're in a room full of toddlers, to enforce something like that? Speaking of a mom of a 15-month-old kid, you can't get them to stay in one spot for very long. You know, it's it's going to be tricky. We know we've had to reconfigure the classroom spaces and where the children will be seated during um, group times and things like that and spread things out. We've had to change um, our, our food service and our nutrition curriculum, not so much the content of what they're being served, but how they're being served. For us, our children were being served family style as part of our curriculum. They learned their table manners and how to pass food and how to serve themselves. Now we've had to change that as well. So our, our um, culinary team has has had to kind of adjust at how, how they're doing everything too. So there really isn't anything that hasn't been impacted by this. Are you going to or have you been able to get access to the new things you're now required to have in addition to masks, gowns in certain settings, also an additional uh, list of cleaning supplies that you're going to need to have? Are you able to get those or are you concerned that there's going to be a short supply of those? Right now we feel we're in, we're in good shape. We have been um, we've been very fortunate to secure what we need um, and and meet the guidelines of the the health and, and well-being of the children um, in accordance with the um, the rules that have have been set forth. Where we're most concerned is just, you know, keeping up and, and as things change. And again, to getting back to it, we've, we've always been very proud of how clean we've been able to keep things and, and have taken pride in, um, you know, exceeding the standards as they were beforehand. But this is, um, this is a new world we're, we're in right now. And we know that things are different. We have to be careful with products that we use as we have been you know, always and using um, green products that are um, safe for the children, particularly children who have any kind of respiratory issues. And, and we have to be careful and take that extra measure for children who may be sensitive to certain chemicals. Um, so there's a there's a lot of complication in there. We're very fortunate that we have received some grant funding from different foundations and corporations who have been very generous with us as we have been working to serve families um, through this time, but also as we prepare to reopen um, and help meet the needs there. Everything from, you know, work that we're doing to reconfigure our classrooms to um, work that we're doing to help the children address the stress and trauma that some of them may have endured during this time. In terms of caring for kids who may have special needs, might have vulnerabilities, whether that's asthma or other health conditions, Conditions. How are you, do you feel confident that you're prepared to serve them in this new environment? I think so. I think, you know, there's, um, 
there's there's this great unknown where, as I mentioned before, we're sort of we're preparing for every possible scenario um, and and some of the the extremes that might come with all of this, how the children are going to respond to being back with us, um, how they'll respond to seeing their teacher in a mask or finding out that one of their their you know, their best friend from their class isn't coming back. And how is all that going to be? Their classrooms are going to look very different. They're going to have a lot of questions. So in addition to the things like keeping things clean and in order, there's that whole level of, of, of social and emotional um, needs that we're going to be working towards meeting. The childcare workers who are very busy, as you know, caring for children in these settings are now having to add all of these additional tasks to their plate during a given day. Is this putting an undue burden on them? The special thing about um, people who work in this business is that their their heart and soul is is into this. So I I don't want to say that it's really undue. It's going to be a lot more work. I I, I think that they're all willing to do it. We've seen um, a, a tremendous response from our our staff um, and and what they've been willing to do. They've worked all through this. Even when we didn't have children, they were in touch with their families constantly, um, dropping off. Um, um, family engagement activities, posting videos of them reading stories and doing lessons online to continue on in their learning journey. So our staff is just, they're so committed and so dedicated. Um, you know, I, I don't i don't know that any of them feel that it's an undue um, burden on them, but it is a lot of work. 